welcome to the third episode of .NET Concept of the Week, where I explain a concept related to .NET programming every week in a short video. This time we are going to talk about a C Sharp 8 feature called Null Label Reference Types. Now, at the time of the recording, C Sharp 8 is not yet finalized, but there is already a prototype implementation for this C Sharp 8 feature. You can find the link to the prototype compiler in the description. Additionally, I also referenced a blog post from Microsoft. So everything I show you in this video is not final, things can be changed in the future, but if you want to know in what direction C Sharp can go in the next release, then keep watching. To put nullable reference types into perspective, let's talk about value types first. So if you have a value type, for example an integer, then you cannot assign null to it. So value types are not nullable, a value type always has to have a default value, the language prevents us from using null references with value types by default. Now obviously there are scenarios with value types when you want to express that a value type doesn't have a value. For this C Sharp 2 introduced nullable value types, the syntax for this is that you put a question mark after the type name. With this, as you can see, I can assign null to this integer and the compiler is still happy. What happens in the background is that the compiler wraps this integer into the system.nullable type, which is a struct that knows that this integer either has a value or it's null. So in case of value types, the default behavior is that they cannot be null unless we enable them to be nullable with this syntax. Now reference types behave differently in the current c -sharp version, which is 7.2. Let's say we have a person class. When we create an instance of this person class, we can simply assign null to it. So unlike value types, reference types in the current c -sharp version are by default nullable. And this seems to be the root cause of most of the exceptions in .NET. I don't have a research or a statistic to reference here, but based on my experience, most of the exceptions that .NET developers have to deal with are null reference exceptions. And this is exactly what C Sharp 8 wants to fix with nullable reference types. In C Sharp 8, when you don't mark your reference type with a question mark, then it means that you don't want it to be nullable. So the idea is that reference types should work exactly as value types. By default, they always have to have a value and if you want to allow null, then you have to specifically enable it in the code. I already installed a prototype compiler here that supports nullable reference types. So let's create a person instance and assign null to it. As you can see, we got a warning here, cannot convert null to non-nullable reference. This is new in C Sharp 8, so the proposal is that the new compiler will treat reference types also non-nullable every time where null is assigned to a non-nullable reference type, then it gives you a warning. Now if this would be an error and not a warning, then this would be a breaking change in the language, meaning you wouldn't be able to compile old code with the new compiler. The idea with using warnings is that once you use the new compiler, you will still be able to compile your code, but you get additional warnings that help you to find potential null references. Now you may say, okay, all this is nice, but what if null for some of your reference type instances makes sense? In this case, you can make those nullable by putting a question mark after the type name. So this is analog to the integer example. You can't assign null to an integer, unless you put a question mark to it. With this, you tell the compiler that this is a nullable reference type instance and it is okay to assign null to it. And even better, each time when you dereference it, the compiler will warn you that you should use a null check. And this is actually very cool because the compiler makes a flow analysis here. For example, when I check for null once and return from this method, then the compiler knows that after this point, this variable cannot be null, so from this point it won't warn me because this case there is really no way to hit this line with a null reference. In this small example we just had a local variable, but of course this works everywhere. The example in the Microsoft blog post has for example three string fields in the person class, a first name, a last name and a middle name. Now just by adding the three string properties, we actually created a potential null reference back here, since an instance of this class can be created without initializing the strings. And as you can see, the compiler warns us 
So let's create a constructor that takes two parameters, which are the first name and the last name, and we assign those. With that, we got rid of the warnings for the first and the last name. Now there are people who don't have a middle name. I'm an example for this. So let's say that the middle name can be null. And with that, we got rid of the remaining warning. And of course, from this point, every time when we dereference the middle name, the compiler will force us to use null checks. Now let's do one more thing in this code. Let's create a method that prints the middle name. It gets a person parameter and simply uses console.writeline to print the middle name. Since the middle name is nullable, the compiler warns us about a possible null reference. Now what if you are 100% sure that the person instance that you pass to this method always has a middle name or let's say you already documented this and you don't want to care about this problem. For this, c 8 plans to add a new operator. With this, you basically tell the compiler that you know for sure that this here will never be null, therefore the warning should go away. So as you can see, by adding this operator, the warning is gone. Of course, this is a little bit dangerous, since in this case you can have a null reference here, so be really careful with this operator. Now everything the compiler does regarding nullable and non-nullable reference types doesn't affect the generated IL code. So this question mark and this new operator influences the flow analysis regarding finding potential non-references, but the underlying reference type won't be changed. So when we look at the compiled code in DNSPY, we see that there is no difference between the nullable middle name and the non-nullable first and last names. So let's sum up the proposed changes regarding nullable references in c 8. The default meaning of a variable for reference types changes. The default meaning is that it is non-nullable and the compiler will warn you when you assign null to it. In case you need to use null for your reference types, you can mark them with the question mark and from that point the compiler will warn you if you dereference such a variable without null checking it. Additionally, with this new operator, you can also disable the warning when you want to overrule the compiler. Until this point, we talked about this feature by using a tiny hello world sample. Let's use it now on a bigger codebase. Now, I wasn't really sure what codebase to show you in this video, but as a good YouTuber, I decided to take my own codebase and embarrass myself by showing you my own null reference box. So I have here an application that I created without using the non-nullable reference types feature. It's still not a very big application, but it's definitely a more real-world example than the previous code. I opened it with the new compiler and now let's go through a few warnings regarding null references. This is a UWP application with MVVM, so let's look at a code behind file. First of all, we have a bunch of warnings here that the items I created in the XAML file are uninitialized. This is interesting since that should be done by the tooling, so I guess this is something that Microsoft has to fix. Now let's move on within this constructor. There are a bunch of warnings here because my view model could be null. Here I basically wire up events between the UI and the view model. So for every block here, I need a valid view model. There are multiple options here, but to keep this short, I will simply return from the constructor if the view model is null. Of course, we could also throw an exception here, since the UI won't be able to work without the view model, but the point is that with this, we basically prevent null reference exceptions, and the new language feature helped us to find these potential problems. Now let's move on. As you can see, this item also could be null, so let's fix that. I simply use the null conditional operator here. Then this selected item can again be null, so let's also check for that. Of course, we could also add error handling here. Again, the point is that the compiler shows you the potential problem, and then it's up to you how you fix it. But one thing is sure, once the warnings are gone, then you will have less points in your code where null reference exceptions can be thrown. Now let's look into the view model class. As you can see, I have a bunch of uninitialized fields here. So one thing would be to fix those. And then there is one very bad thing that I did here, which the prototype compiler catches for me. As you can see here in the clear data method, I explicitly assign null to some fields. The first two are lists, so I can simply use the clear method to remove the items from those. Now the two other fields are nullable on purpose, so in that case I just put a question mark to those. 
and from this point I will get warnings for those if I dereference them without a null check. Now I stop here since I guess you already got the point. Once I go through these warnings, I will decrease the probability of null reference exceptions in my code dramatically. The prototype implementation of this feature is in a very early stage, but to me this feature looks very promising. As you can see, it helps us a lot to fix potential null reference exceptions. And again, this is not final, things can be changed or completely dropped, but it's definitely very interesting. And that's it for this week, I hope you found this video useful and next week I will explain another concept.